already my dad is Tunisian, my mom is Ukrainian, so from that already we had to travel. My children have three cultures, languages, it's like a mess. <laughs> so anyways, I travel a lot, obviously. How does that relate to my work? Completely, I would say. That's why my work is not related to a certain tradition, to a certain culture. It only represents itself, it doesn't represent any region. I would say that my work adapts always to the places where I find myself. So like in this case in Amman, I discovered this place which looked like a kind of a ruin. I started to talk around, ask what about these buildings, why they were demolished. One of the houses that was demolished, there was a lady living there. Her father had died. She dreamt of him and he told her this golden ring, I found it in the foundation of the house. She understood it as her father telling her there is a treasure in the foundation and that you should dig for it. This woman really decided to destroy her home looking for the gold. She didn't find any and she left. This ruined space has a very rudimentary fence and I noticed instead of holding or separating, it is being held and it is being protected. This is a kind of a metaphor or a parallel to our actual situation in the world. We see that the way we are consuming, producing, this creating wealth is creating much more misery and poverty, not only on the social level, but of course we know that the earth cannot sustain it anymore. We prefer to keep our comfort zone and protect it, although it's not holding anymore. This work is called the famous book of Marx, Das Kapital, Epilogue. And it was just the perfect illustration of it, in my sense, also related to this anecdote of the woman. I'm someone who pays attention to details. So what interests me is what people usually see but don't really pay attention to, and what I call the invisible, because it is there, but it seems not important enough to pay attention to it. And this is really what grabs my attention. These small things, or let's say even if they're big, sometimes they tell a lot about ourselves, about our society, about our habitus. So there's somehow I feel like the invisible is the unconscious of a society, which is present within the realms of the urban space. That's a field of research for me. And I'm very much inspired by what people tell me while they're not really thinking what they're saying. So again, these things that you don't control. It's a permanent experimentation, yeah. With the materials, with the people around you, experimenting myself, my boundaries, my borders, how far I can go with things. The road is more important than the goal itself, yeah.